Hey hey, Marcus Sass with you here in another jam-packed week of news. SpaceX development of the SN3 Starship is still steaming ahead with the main body now stacked and more news dropping every day. Some awesome breaking news with NASA just announcing that SpaceX will be delivering cargo to the Lunar Gateway using the Mystery Dragon XL. So that is super exciting. The lost booster from the Starlink No. 5 mission is getting a little more interesting now with NASA involved in the investigation. We're hoping it isn't going to cause any new delays with the upcoming Crew Dragon mission. Also some tough news for fans of Bigelow Space and OneWeb among other things, so yes, it has been an interesting week. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Over to Boca Chica, Texas with progress updates on Starship development. The bottom engine bay of the SN3 Starship was stacked together early in the week. The top larger section of course is the bottom of the liquid oxygen tank. Under that the skirting that provides a casing for the engines to hang down under the upper bulkhead and of course the landing leg components are attached here as well. This structure needs to be super tough because under the lowest bulkhead is where the thrust puck structure exists right here. This structure needs to support the stresses generated by the three Raptor engines at full thrust and that will be mounted here. Now just remember as far as we know at this point the SN3 iteration of the Starship design is still planning to take at least one small flight. This is no small task and the thrust puck structure here is incredibly important. If for whatever reason this structure or the attached bulkhead crumples after takeoff that will be the end of the vessel. As we've seen with the SN1 explosion which was caused by that failing structure just a little over a month ago there has been a huge focus on getting this thrust puck structure correct. The entire reason why the following SN2 was built as a much smaller test tank was to ensure the updated design for this critical part was adequate for the job. That vessel survived both a water pressure test and a cryogenic liquid nitrogen test and has since been moved back and stored away. Now this is a great sign for the SN3 and if we take a look at the full tank stack we have in place right now this is looking much more robust than all previous iterations so far. The number of ring segments being churned out around the construction site is incredible as well. In fact there's already construction work underway for the SN4 which just blows my mind. By the time the SN3 is getting ready to take its test flight the next iteration will be well underway. The stacking of all these components in the assembly building here have come together very rapidly. The upper tank segments were just the other day stacked right up on top of the new engine bay component. Elon Musk shared some photos of this as well just just after stacking also mentioning that the massive downcomer structure was already in place in the tank. This is essentially the structure that will feed the liquid methane down from the header tank through the much larger liquid oxygen tank to be fed into the three Raptor engines. At this point we're wondering if the huge nose cone will be stacked on top anytime soon but we're expecting that tank pressure tests and more work probably to do with the body itself is going to be done prior to that. Already the height of this Starship component will be massive at around 50 meters in height including the nose cone. The size of this really is hard to comprehend. The diameter here alone is 9 meters wide. Now just roughly measure out around 9 meters nearby around you. That is a massive amount of space. It's so big you could fit two Falcon 9 boosters side by side within the width of this huge area. What really blows my mind still to this day is that this is just the second smaller stage. The super heavy booster that this massive massive beast will sit on top of will make this by far the most massive rocket to ever attempt to leave the ground. That is going to be quite a day to see that lift off for the first time. Let's not get ahead of ourselves though. First we need the Starship component to actually fly and hopefully we're going to see that very soon. Now there has recently been some interesting road closures published here. These are always due to move of course but based on what we see here I suspect we'll be seeing the Starship moving to the launch pad very shortly assuming it hasn't already been moved in order to begin of course with pressure tests. With any luck shortly after we'll see some Raptor engines mounted and we'll have a static fire shortly after that. Once these are complete we're not 100% certain what sort of flight we may be looking at. Some recent documents suggest a 150 meter hop test although I can't confirm how accurate they are. We'll need to wait and see on that but what do you think? Is the SN3 Starship likely to do a smaller hop or a much longer flight? Let me know in the comments. Now there have been a number of comments about the holes here freshly cut into the nose cone. The assumption by a number of people is that these could be for reaction control systems. I'm not so sure about that at this point. Technically the SN3 using three Raptor engines could have the gimbal systems needed to fully control the roll as needed. So this is all going to be very interesting to see unfold. What 
do you think? Let us know in the comments. In preparation for this flight, the test stand has been making huge progress this week. More recently, we've seen these interesting structures here that we're assuming are a ram test system to simulate the pressure of the engines. This is going to be a different ball game to the much smaller Starhopper, so a lot more infrastructure is needed for the much larger Starship. Thanks as always to NASA Space Flight and Boca Chica Gal for the incredible dedication to covering all of this news. A link to the channel is in the description. In one of the latest videos, Chris here explains how they are strictly adhering to all of the guidelines, rules and laws that allow them to be an accredited media organisation. Boca Chica Gal as well abide by all of these regulations, so thank you very much to all you're doing here. It is worth noting that all other sources of media out there need to ensure that they're also following those guidelines to be certain that we can all keep covering this amazing SpaceX progress. We certainly don't want to see any blanket bans on all coverage. Now, just recently as well, it has been announced by NASA that SpaceX are to be the first US commercial provider under the Gateway Logistics Services contract to deliver cargo, experiments, and other supplies to the Lunar Gateway. This is a big deal, and this illustration labelled as the Dragon XL shows the unheard of vessel being deployed from a Falcon Heavy's second stage in high Earth orbit. This is going to be incredible, and of course this news is very fresh, so we're hoping to hear a lot more about the Dragon XL in the very near future. Now some news this week about Bigelow Aerospace. Due to what they are calling a perfect storm of problems, sadly the company has laid off all of its employees. Now obviously we are in tough times right now, that certainly wouldn't have helped here and our heart goes out to everyone affected by this and of course all other organisations with similar struggles right now. I've been a big fan of Bigelow over the years with projects like the expandable module mounted to the International Space Station back in 2018. It's a real shame that this work will more than likely not continue in any meaningful way. The competitor Axiom Space was of course recently selected instead of Bigelow to provide habitable commercial modules to be attached to the station. This, as it had turned out, was because Bigelow had chosen to bow out of that particular venture due to what they described as a lack of funding. They argued that NASA needed to offer more financial support to make it feasible for private enterprises to take part in such projects. More bad news as well for OneWeb considering filing for bankruptcy protections that deals with the current economic issues along with the massive competition from SpaceX's Starlink network. Interestingly, only last week on the 21st of March, a launch occurred with OneWeb sending an additional 35 satellites into orbit on the Soyuz. Now, similar to Starlink, OneWeb's mission is to create a sophisticated broadband satellite network. To date, they have been the only real competition that is right now launching similar infrastructure into space. The problem though has always been that SpaceX are not only manufacturing their own satellites, but they're also the launch provider of their own Starlink network. This certainly gives them the edge simply because they are reusing boosters capable of at least five flights. Although we don't know for sure what this launch cost may be for SpaceX directly, I think it's fair to assume that SpaceX has a significantly lower mass to orbit cost and a much higher launch capability. SpaceX's president Gwen Shotwell had previously hinted that trying to build such a network without lower costs to orbit orbit would be a financial mistake. It is looking like that may well be the case as well. What do you think? Does OneWeb have any chance against a company like SpaceX? I'm all for competition but I don't see how they can win that race considering the strong lead that SpaceX has over it. Now if you want to know more about Starlink in general I've got a video here that goes deeper into the benefits and also the associated concerns around all that. And while you're here of course please do consider subscribing. There's loads more news coming out not only with Starlink but Starship development and crew drag and I'd love to share all that with you. Speaking of Crew Dragon, there was a slight hiccup with a parachute drop test during the week. As shared here by Chris G from NASA Spaceflight, the test article suspended underneath the helicopter became unstable. In order to keep the helicopter crew safe, the pilot pulled the emergency release and let the test article fall. I'm not certain what the test article looked like in this particular case, but I would assume it's something like some of the parachute test footage released previously by SpaceX here. So yes, at the time of the release, the test article didn't have the parachute armed, and Therefore, the parachute did not deploy. Uh, luckily, no one was harmed in the mishap, and this shouldn't in any way reflect badly on any of the systems needed by SpaceX for the Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission. 
Now back on March 18th, we watched the Starlink 5 launch with the incredible Falcon 9. This was another successful mission sending up another batch of 60 Starlink satellites. What didn't go quite to plan was that the booster was lost prior to the typical landing on the drone ship, which we learned later was related to an engine malfunction on the ascent. Interestingly, the same flight aborted just before the engines fired up for liftoff just a few days prior, so the two issues may have been connected there as well. It is quite interesting because this was the first time an engine shutdown like this has occurred since the very first commercial resupply mission way back in 2012. After the dust settled on the lost booster, there was a discussion by Josh Finch, a spokesperson for NASA, saying that personnel from NASA's commercial crew program will be represented in SpaceX's engine anomaly investigation. Now, it's going to be interesting to see if this is going to cause further delays in the Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but just before that, this week's sponsor. You all know how this works. To spend the time I do to research, edit, and create this content for everyone, funding and support is super important. Important. Today, this video is sponsored by NordLocker. No matter what industry you're in, it's likely that you have sensitive data to protect, especially when working remotely outside of a central office location. Cloud storage services these days are so user-friendly, your security can easily slip unnoticed. All it takes is a leaked password into one of these systems to allow malicious users full access to your files, but not if your files are encrypted before ending up on any of these platforms. In these circumstances, it is critical to protect your confidential finances, photos, videos, and passwords. With NordLocker, you can encrypt and keep your data safe wherever you need. It lets you quickly share encrypted files via email, messaging apps, airdrop, file transfer services, you name it. It is quite literally as easy as drag and drop, and you can use it with most popular cloud services such as Dropbox or Google Drive. With the free account, you can encrypt up to two gigabytes of files to check it out for yourself. If you pick up the premium version, there is no limit to the size or number of files you can protect. Thank you very much to NordLocker for their support of this channel. And if you would like to help support me and would like to give it a try, you can take control of your security and privacy and download NordLocker free for Mac and Windows at nordlocker.net slash Marcus House. If you want to purchase the NordLocker premium account, use the coupon code Marcus House so you can get 32% off the one year plan. The link is in the description below. So yes, now that NASA appears to be involved in the investigation of the engine anomaly that occurred on the last Falcon 9 flight, we're all wondering if this is going to cause further delays to push the Crew Dragon Demo Flight 2 mission back further than May, which is when it was thought the flight would occur. As reported here by Spacenews.com, Josh Finch said that according to the Commercial Crew Transportation Capability contracts, SpaceX is required to make available to NASA all data and resulting reports. SpaceX and NASA together would need to implement implement any corrective actions found during the investigation related to its commercial crew work prior to its test flight with astronauts to the International Space Station. Now, the day after the launch, Elon Musk tweeted saying that the reason the booster failed to land was due to an early engine shutdown on ascent. A thorough investigation will be needed before the next mission. When asked by Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, whether this was related to the first launch scrub, Elon replied saying that the launch aborted due to slightly higher power. It is a possibility, but not obviously related to the anomaly of the following flight. As he says here, this booster has seen a lot of wear with this being the fifth flight of that same booster core, so the anomaly wasn't really that big of a surprise. From this, we can assume that SpaceX is really pushing the boundaries of what is possible with the Falcon 9 booster, and these are very high-performing Starlink launches. These launches are some of the most intense for the booster simply due to the huge mass of the 60 satellites riding on board. Elon even goes on to say here that these life leader rockets are used only for internal missions. Such a booster would not be used on non-SpaceX satellite missions. So this is the thing, right? The Crew Dragon demo mission flying astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley will be a brand new booster. Assuming that this anomaly from the Starlink mission was due to wear and tear on the booster, there is really nothing to worry about here with this mission. Currently, the launch is still scheduled within May, but as it says here, NASA would adjust the date based on the review of the data if appropriate. So let's all just hope that this investigation doesn't cause any unnecessary delays for that demo mission. We just can't wait for this mission to happen, it's going to be a highlight of 2020 for sure. 
Now, just quickly, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons here. You are quite literally turning this dream of mine of creating this content from a hobby into something much more significant. If you like what I do and you would like to join our awesome patrons here, head to patreon.com slash Marcus House. You can interact with me more directly via the included exclusive roles in Discord. You can check out some exclusive patron-only content and can also have your name listed right here like these other incredible people. A massive thank you as well to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be a part of this, follow me on Twitter and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video last week covering the initial stacking of the SN3, the Starlink flight with the missing booster and Rocket Lab news. In the top right is my latest video and in the bottom right, content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.